Hey guys, welcome. This is FreeSalonEducation.com. Matt Beck. I'm here with American Salon Magazine. We're at the Premier Beauty Show. I've got Sam Via here. And What's I'm up, Matt? Super <laughs> excited. Uh, I, I pretty much say I'm excited to talk to everybody, but I am legitimately excited for the fact that you were doing free content before free content was cool. Wow. Right? Yes. So yep. you've been doing it forever. And I, you know, I launched freesaloneducation.com. The goal was, you know, just to educate. I, I watched the way that you create videos is it's knowledge first and then everything else comes after that. Well, you know what, man? I think one of the most important things as a hairdresser, we must never cease to learn. You know why? Because I really believe, Matt, there's danger in the comfort zone. So a lot of times I'm telling hairdressers, keep one foot in the comfort zone and one foot out. Yeah. Always continually challenge yourself to do something another way that you already do. Right. You know, like even cutting a one link bob. Can you imagine if you can find three, four ways to cut a one link bob? See, that's what keeps that's a hairdresser when you, excited. You understand it. Like, so I've actually come across this quite a bit is now that you create so much content, you have to go back and you create the same you know, one length bob or whatever. Right. But when you cut it differently, like maybe you cut it horizontally one day, you cut it vertically the other day, now you're understanding all aspects of hair cutting, not just the one way. Like so, so, so true. And the most important thing about that is this, is that one link bobs, as we know, Matt, they're difficult to cut. Right. Yeah. Right? right? So it's about finding, I think that the world is so fast paced now, it's about finding simplicity. Yeah. Simple ways to do things. Like a lot of times, Matt, I'll teach this whole concept of compressed cutting. Yeah. You know, like Montreal, Canada. When I took a big section like that and lifted it, elevated it, and cut it, they just cringed. <laughs> and they kept cringing through the haircut. Right. But what was great to watch their faces when I dried it. And then I did an interview with an editor from a magazine in Montreal, and she said, I have to be honest and tell you, she goes, in Montreal, we're, we don't do it that way. Right. She goes, we were all watching you do this, and we go, that guy is crazy. But she said, I have to tell you, when you were done, it was absolutely beautiful. So she said, there is another way to cut hair. Yeah, there is. And there is, you know. It's, there's, it's a reason. There's a reason behind everything we do. Yeah. And I think, uh, so, condensed cutting, when you look at things like that, like, condensed cutting, you're condensing an entire section as long as you understand the why behind it. That's correct. Which is what you guys have, have mastered in explaining the why. Thank so you. So tell me about tell me about your team. How did how did the whole thing get started? Um, when did it start? Well, I think it really started for me personally when I, uh, I've always been teaching now for 35 years. Right. But I didn't really know. I was really in sports and I was coaching quite a bit. So I okay. knew, you know, how to go about teaching buddy, someone how to do something. But when I got into the hair world, I really knew that I wanted to be a platform artist or be a teacher. So I figured out how to do that. But what really jumpstarted me was when I joined Redkin and they said, Sam, you need, you're need you really good, but you need to turn it around and focus on the learner. So it's learner-based, and I didn't quite understand. I said learner-focused. They said focus on the learner, make everything based what you do, what you teach for the learner. Okay. And when you take yourself out of the way, Matt, it all comes out in a genuine way. I have to be honest and say, I don't understand sometimes how platform artists can get up on a stage and make things sound so difficult. Yeah. You know, or they make things look so difficult when it can be so, so simple. So it was about, you know, teaching buddy, somebody something, but then you had to have the why behind it. I think too many teachers are out there teaching them, here's how you do it. Right. But they never get the why in there. Yeah. And when you get the why in there, people are like, oh, I get it. Yeah. For example, condensed cutting. The example I use is like taking paper in a paper cutter. The less paper you take, the edge is really clean. Yeah. The more paper you take, you get the paper moves and you get this soft little curved line. Yeah. So I tell people, so why would you want to take section by section, get it precise, and then go in there and slice it or point cut it into it? <laughs> right. You know, let's yeah. compress it. Yeah. And they go, well, Sam, that's not how I was taught. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You always hear that. Right. But you know what? It, they're, they're, like I said, there's more than one way to do something. You know, they always, they told Vidal Sassoon, it's never going to work. And guess what? It worked. And then they said, you're going to be precision cutting for a while. And then we start slicing and we start point cutting. And we did that because the consumers were picking up round brushes. Right. And I'll never forget, a salon owner said, Sam, you need to get over your precision little self. I go, what do you mean, Bob? He said, I'm going to teach you how to point cut. I'm going to teach you how to slice. Yeah. And I said, that's not how I was taught. And then he made a comment. He said, your taste will be a journey in this industry. He said, your taste buds, your eyes are going to change in terms of how you see things. Your hands are going to change the way you do things. Right. He goes, I'm teaching you this because 
If you keep cutting everything blunt and precise, it collapses. The discovery, Sam, is if we slice it and we do this, but it balances for the canvas and it functions, then the client's going to be happier because they got a round brush in their hand. Right. Now, when I understood the why behind that, I was all in. I jumped yep. in. Yep. Yeah, and it completely makes sense because it's so hard for somebody to, if they're creating, if you have a precise shape that you've cut, and then that client's trying to recreate that at home, right? it's not, not yeah. possible. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. definitely really impossible. I think that's why I'm into this whole world of simplicity. Yeah. You know, clients, and correct me out there if I'm wrong, but clients want in and they want out. Yeah. So you have to understand, you know, there's, sir, there's some clients that I'm going to take me, that we can take an hour for a haircut and, right. a, and a finish. But there's some clients where you know you can get that shape done in 30 to 45 minutes. Still great quality shape and without cu sacrificing customer service, but, it's, but their fa life is so fast paced, they want in and they want out. Just okay. like you colorists out there, they figured out how to eliminate 100 foils. Right. Right? Yep. They yep. figured that out. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all about discoveries. Yeah. So you, so you started, when did you start the Samvia brand? Matter of fact, Funny that you ask. Yeah. Yesterday was our eight-year anniversary. Oh, congratulations. We launched it here at Premier oh, really? Orla Orlando. Okay. We launched it eight years ago. Oh, wow. And I had to walk back in that corner where we were and stand there yeah. and say, this is where it all began. It's so tell me cool. about that. Like, what was that booth like? What was that? Oh, what? it was it was overwhelming. Right. Because I never realized, um, you know, how much respect I had in the industry. And then when I put my name on something, people were come just, the booth was slammed. <laughs> and we were like, what, you know? And I said, what are you standing in line for? A comb? I go, you're standing in this long line for a comb? They said, Sam, I've been waiting for you, for you to put something with your name on it. I just want to hold, I just want to hold it. That's awesome. Matt, that, that, you know, that's, there's nothing, you can't pay enough money for that. Yeah. Well, the thing I look up to you for is the fact that, like, I, I just see, you are the person that just you give you give to the industry you're not asking for anything no. and and that's when you're so people are looking up to you for that and i see like people are who would you recommend platform artist of the year all that stuff it's always your name put in there because of the hard work that you put in the dedication you have to the industry so that's really cool so tell me about um what's coming up in the future with sambia and the products and just everything i know you always have yeah, Something. there's some cool stuff we have come happening. I want to go back to that comment that you made. I really believe, Matt, that if I can help people get what they want, I'll get what I want. Right. You know, and that's the whole philosophy of the brand. And we've got some great stuff coming up. I want to uh, create another series of shears. So what I'm doing, Matt, is I, I wanted to come out of the gate and give us a shear that's good quality that was in the medium price range. Okay. That a lot of hairdressers could afford. That was really important to me. Yeah. Then I came out with another series called Essential Series. And I said to myself, I want to make this for the kids coming out of school. I want to make it, make it for the hairdressers that can't afford a $500, right. $400, $300 shear. Yeah. Now I'm coming out with a Rolls Royce. Okay. So now it's time to come out with the shear that there's a tribe out there that want. They they have no problem paying $900, $1,000 right. for yeah. their shears. So I want to go in there. You know, So I'm just putting my feet in the marketplace in terms of, the, 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 those price ranges because I want to be able to capture all of the market, not just a particular market. Okay. So I'm excited about the shears. I'm also excited about the new blow dryer. Okay. And the reason I'm going to come out with another blow dryer is my whole, the brand is set up on ergonomics. Okay. The brand is set up on education. So ergonomics to me, blow dryer was important that's light and quiet and compact. So you don't right. have the extension of that arm. Okay. Yet. The response I get on the blow dryer is there's a tribe out there that says, I wish your blow dryer was more powerful. Okay. I wish it was hotter. Okay. Now, I'm against really intense heat, yet right. I want to satisfy that tribe out there. So I'm going to come out with a blow dryer that has an AC motor. So it's going to be heavier. It's going to be powerful. Still okay. ergonomics, compact, short hosel, the whole bit. Nice. But it's going to be heavier because uh, it's going to be more powerful. Okay. So that's in the mix, too, a, a blow dryer. I can't wait for the curling iron. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I've been working on this project for four years. Okay. The curling iron. Why is the thermal tool industry forcing us to spring activate it? It's pretty amazing, right? Yeah. I mean, when you think yeah. about it, you, it's difficult to find a good Marcel yeah. iron. Yep. So I'm making a Marcel iron. Okay. 
but imagine this, Matt. You push a button, Marcel handle comes off, and now you got a wand. All right. Now so, you got me on that part. Yes, yeah, because good job. what I want is I want to, I'm a guy that wants to satisfy the hairdresser's needs. Right. A hairdresser making tools for the hairdressers for the right reason. Right. I'm not about the money. So it'd be easier for me to make a Marcel, and here's a, a wand. Right. I want to give them two irons and one. That's important to me. Yeah. And it's a longer barrel. These short little barrels they sell to us, and we're trying to get in there and do this and just get some bend and wrap the hair. Yeah. It's longer barrel, and push a button, comes off, and snaps right back in. I'm in. I was just doing a client yesterday, and I was wrapping her hair around a large barrel curling iron right. with the spring load, but, you know, not using the spring-loaded part, so oh, yeah, right. I'm, I'm all in on that. Yeah, isn't That's, it cool? Yeah. Right, so I'm going to come out, in the beginning, I'll come out with Marcel and spring. Now, why spring? Because I want them to be able to retail an iron, spring-activated, to the consumer. Okay. Marcel, professional. So I think sometimes we have to ask ourselves as hairdressers behind the chair, what sets us apart from the consumer? Right. Sometimes it's the simple tool that you're holding in your hand. Yeah. And then again, there's consumers out there say, I want the same blow dryer you're holding. You know, sir. Yeah. So you never know. I mean, we might have that with the iron, but right now, those are the items that I'm really, really excited about. Oh, that's very cool. And then, so, and you have a great team. I've met Andrew. Andrew's awesome. A ton of times, and your team keeps growing. Yes, it does. So, is that something that are you looking for um, education people? Is there something? Is that something your company does? Yes, we are. We're a growing company, and we're becoming much more in demand, and I can't do everything myself, right. plus my obligations with Redkit. Right. So Andrew is awesome in terms of... Andrew is, is uh, a lot like me. We believe in people. Right. We believe that people buy people, then they buy things. Yeah. So it's about making that connection. We make that connection with the way we teach. We make that connection with our tools. But most importantly is we we got to grow our team. Right. You know, And as a leader, I have to know when to step aside. That's important really important and give these kids the opportunity to grow so we're growing our team we just brought on board jesse lenaris okay uh who was an ex redkin artist <clears throat> and he's awesome he's great i think he and andrew or andrew is building a new cutting system for us okay i'm so immersed in redkin it's difficult yeah. for me to think differently than what i think so right. andrew's built a new cutting system which will be launching out in uh, january 2017 is our goal okay and then jesse will contribute to that but i you know what and I don't have a problem saying this. I need a woman on stage, <laughs> on stage, on stage, on <laughs> stage. Okay. I want to make that perfectly clear, Matt. I need, I think we got to open the door for a woman to get up yeah. there and teach. So I'm looking for a, a female that's really good with long hair and that can cut and can color. And okay. it's difficult to find. I mean, we've, we've had, we did a big audition process. We had over 300 people apply. Right. And my artistic director, Geneva Cowan and Andrew were in charge of narrow it down to like five people. Okay. And the five people they narrowed down to were all guys. I said, where's the women? We need a woman. Yeah. Sam, you know, we just didn't get what we feel is the right fit. Okay. The right need. So that's what I really want to do is add women. But we're growing as a team and I think it's important to grow as a team. And this is what I keep saying to people too. Like you, so a lot of people want to, they want to be educators. They want to be platform artists or whatever. I think now is the time where it's easy if you want to put in the work to reach out to companies like Sambia via social media, yes. because you guys are definitely a big part of that, and tagging you in the work that they're doing Absolutely right. and getting involved in that way. And then when you show up to a place, somebody already knows who you are. Right. Um, so what else would you say uh, as somebody that's trying to come up in the industry, what would be a, a piece of advice you would well, give? Well, my, I totally want to tag on to what you said. I think social media is the way to go. It's the route to go. You've got so much talent now coming out of two dimension, the two dimensional world, the yeah. social media world, a lot of talent now. Great with the hands and great with the eyes and great behind that screen. Right. A lot of times they come out from behind and now you put them in front of people, but they can't teach. Right. But they can do some beautiful hair. So I think it's an opportunity for these people that are out there that want to become a platform artist. I think what's really important is that you go the social media route, yet at the same time, you've got to learn how to communicate what it is that you're, what you're doing. Exactly. So my suggestion would be, what I used to do when I was young would be grab a mannequin, get in front of a mirror, the mirror is the audience, and speak it out. Yep. And you talk it out. And I would talk it out while I was listening to rock and roll music. Why? So I controlled my little voice. So I could learn how to control this because sometimes there's a committee in here that talks to me. 
you know, and I got to learn how to control that committee. That's a good but idea. I think social media is really the route to go then. The other route would be show up at these shows. Yeah. You've got to come to these shows. If you want to be a platform artist, you want to be an educator, want to be a teacher, you got you, got, you have to see what people are doing. You have to watch presenters, learn from presenters, learn the do's and the don'ts. Yeah. You know, what what's, what are they doing that you like? What are they uh, doing that doesn't maybe fit for you? And walk away with those ideas and those things and then make them your own. You yeah. know, one of the mistakes I did, Matt, was I'll never forget the very first show I did about 200 people in the audience, speaking before me and doing a haircut was Paul Mitchell. Right. Paul Mitchell himself. And this was the guy that I would, I mean, just honored, yeah. right? Followed. So I got up there and I tried to be Paul Mitchell. And my guy that was my coach at the time and helping me, he said, what are you doing? I go, he goes, Sam, you weren't you. Yeah. You were trying to be somebody you're not. Right. He goes, the reason people will like you is who you are and what you're about. He goes, don't ever change that again. And don't try to get up there and be somebody you're not. You've got to be true to who you are. Yeah. Big, true learning lesson for me. Yeah, I totally agree. I worked, I worked for Paul Mitchell, the company, for 10 years. And I found myself trying to be those people for a long time. Is that true? And then my, my wife constantly reminded me to, <laughs> yep. to be myself. And then, you know, when I finally launched my company, it was... I, I started to get it. I started to understand who I was. Right. And that's really cool to hear. Well, I love you because I, I love listening to your interviews. You're very natural about it. Thanks. You know, you're just very much you and you're <laughs> just, you, I could tell you care about the person you're talking to, but you also have genuine concern for the industry. Yeah. You know, and I think if you have that, you know, the, the, let the, the people are pushing you to the top. That's what's happening. Well, a lot of people like to be interviewed. I love to dig out and figure out what, how the heck everyone else right. did everything. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a way better seat for me because uh, yeah. I get the insider information. So that's very cool. So anybody wants to follow Sam Via, Sam Via everything, uh, right? Yeah. So it's uh, Sam Via Hair is our Instagram. Uh, Sam Via Professional is our f uh, professional Facebook page. Okay. And then also be sure to check out the the uh, YouTube channel slash yeah. Sam Via. That, that's where all the education goes yeah you know i Tons. mean youtube is a is a place i mean such people, a cool platform you, you know what man people are yeah exactly people go where'd you where'd you come up with it i go i'm the messenger i'm the guy that goes out there finds it and then i deliver it right i i have been doing this for 39 years i stand in front of people motivated by the passion to teach right over the 39 years matt so many people have shared so many things with me i choose to stand in front of people and pay it forward and give that information and share that information. I don't stand in front of people to be a rock star, to be a visionary, to be a genius, and, or nor to be an inventor. I stand in front of people proud to be a hairdresser who chooses to be a teacher. Awesome. On that note, we'll end it.